Okay, so um, so I'm, I would like to talk about um, a, a sort of approach we took to automating um, enrolment of students into um, into Moodle um, with um, plugins. Uh, I, I should probably say at this point, um, this is possibly more of a development talk than an administration talk. So I, I, um, I, I, I'm so sort of fear I might have put it into the wrong wrong category here, but um, I, I hope it's kind of useful to everyone um, anyway. So, um, so um, the um, what I would like to talk about is um, how we used to do enrolment automation um, many years ago, five five years ago. Um, some of the problems we encountered with that, um, and how the the, the new newish uh, enrolment plugin architecture helped us to improve that. How we do it now, and some of the lessons we learned. So um, basically, a standard presentation. <laughs> um, so. Um, the, the old way we used to do enrolment automation is we, we had um, we have like an in-house student record system. Uh, so um, we we basically developed like a, a, a database view on that and just used the, the standard Moodle database enrolment plugin um, to to essentially enrol uh, students on it. So. Um, so it, it was. The, the, this is basically the, the way that all the, the um, enrollment plugins work in, in Moodle, the, the kind of batch ones like LDAP and um, database and things like that, is, um, is essentially you have a, um, a data structure on, on one side and the, the plugin kind of goes and replicates that in, into Moodle. Um, so very, it's very much the, the data structure is the, um, the important um, Part of that, and um, so if, if if someone you know if someone's on CS 101, they get put into a course called CS 101. If somebody's on CS 202, they get put into a course called CS 202. So it's it's very much a a, a, a very kind of um, tightly structured method of of doing that, um, and the, that's kind of been like that since um, most of these plugins have been like that since Moodle 1.9. They, they they're set up at a server level, and that's that's. How they work. Um, so, so that that was how we did it, and it, it worked pretty well for um, two or three years. Um, we've been using Moodle for maybe six, six or seven years now, um, and that that was how they um, how we did enrolment for for two or three years, and it's okay. It's, it, it works okay, but um, there was there was various problems with that that we found. Um, the main one is. Um, which is possibly more to do with the way our university works than um, <laughs> than actually a problem with Moodle. But um, the Strathclyde's a very kind of um, very kind of decentralised university, so um, you find that there, um, there, there there's no no one's forced to run their course in any specific way. So um, there are you know like, there are loads of um, strange and wonderful ways that things are run. Um, one, one of the main things is you'll get uh, multiple class codes that are taught together. So, so you know, you get, say, CS101, um, maybe computer science for geologists, and then you get CS102, which is computer science for, you know, neurobiologists or something like that. But essentially, they're, they're the same students sitting in the same room, in the same lecture hall. They do the same tutorials. They do the same thing. All the time, um, but the way, the way that the Moodle, um, the database plugin worked, essentially, um, those people are stuck into different Moodle courses, whether you like it or not. Um, so, so there's there's no collaboration between the, the, the two class codes. Um, if anybody's as unlucky as me to have um, worked in WebCT for years, um, this is cross-listing. It was um, it was called in WebCT. Um, so. So I mean that, that that was a problem. We you know we you end up with these people in separate courses. Um, there was things like departments and faculty sites. People wanted to um, have a like a an engineering or like a design management and engineering kind of um, department site, and that just wasn't possible with the the plugin unless we went and messed around with the 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 data that was feeding into it. You know we had we would have had to um, edit the. Um, the Oracle view, um, so things like that were problematic. Um, 
cohorts from multiple academic sessions was a, another thing. We, um, we found that there were some courses where you'd actually have people from um, two different academic sessions sitting in the, in the, the same, or were being taught together. Um, the, the, our MBA was a bit like that. There was um, uh, sort of different, um, different ways of, of doing it so that um, so some people would um, come into it and they, they had two years to, to complete certain courses and, th and things like that. So, so you'd actually find that there was people from the 14-15 session and the 15-16 session all working together in, in the same course. And again, we, we couldn't do that with the, um, the Moodle um, enrollment plugin that we, we were using. Um, so, yeah, essentially the, um, the main problem with it was that the, the external database, what, what was actually um, fed in from the, um, the external student record system just dictated the Moodle structure. Um, so there was a one-to-one -one relationship between um, courses and um, Moodle, Moodle courses, essentially. So um, that, was, that was quite problematic. And also, uh, every time we rolled over to the next academic session, we needed to create a new database viewer that just had those, the users from that academic session. Um, and, and pulled them into Moodle. So the, the, there was all, all sorts of problems with it. Um, when, uh, um, when Moodle 2.0 2 came in, sorry, <laughs> this sounds like the Dark Ages 2.0, but it was, um, we realized that the, the enrollment plugin architecture had changed. So actually, um, it, it changed quite nicely that um, in that, you know, rather, rather than just configuring an enrollment plugin at the, the server level and that just dictating how, how things went. You could actually have enrollment instances, as, as everybody probably knows. Um, you can have enrollment instances and you can configure them, each one separately. So, so a, a course in Moodle can have maybe 10 enrollment instances that are all doing different things, like manual enrollment, op, you know, op, open access, or guest enrollment, that kind of stuff. So um, we, when we looked into that, um, we discovered that the, the enrollment plugins can, can essentially do what they want with the data that they're given when they're configured. So, so there's, there's a load of scope in there for um, you know, creating something pretty useful. Um, so so what, what we did, um, we, we moved away from, from just using this, the, the external database um, enrollment plugin to, to use it, using these, these more kind of granular plugins which we developed. Um, there, there's only really four, I think there's technically eight of them, but um, they, they fall into sort of um, four kind of main categories and, um, and they all work quite nicely together. So, so we have like a, a class enrollment plugin, a program enrollment plugin. Cla a class for us is, is like a module, is a, a sort of part of a, a degree course um, terminology. A program is a, a degree course, it's the whole, the whole thing. Um, user profile and criteria, which I'll, I'll get to later, which is um, probably quite a, a specific Strathclyde thing. So, um, so we created the main one that we use. We've, we've got a class class enrollment plugin, so we, we can now um, we can now add an enrollment instance to a class and say this is for, for this class code. Um, so pull all the students from this class code into into this Moodle course. Um, we, we can also select a session, so um, we, we have a, a one session per, per uh, sorry, one server per academic session, which um, I'm hoping to move away from at some point, but, um, but that, that, that's how we work it. So, so each, each server has a specific session that it's attached to, so we can say, um, you know, pull the students from this class course uh, on this this academic session into this course, and when we we uh, copy that that course for the next session, um, that will just automatically uh, start bringing in the users from the next session. Um, so so that it kind of handles uh, rollover of um, you know it, from year to year, and we can we can select what role people go into. Uh, the program enrollment one is essentially the same. It's um, we can give a program code. Um, we can we can either say you know, like all years, if it's just a, um, somebody's looking for a site for um, a, a Moodle course for um, a specific program, um, 
we, we can pull every day in, but if they want to um, pull in, for example, like, uh, people that are on first year in a, uh, in a programme for possibly, uh, you know, uh, an induction course or something like that, we can say, pull in the people from this programme, uh, pull in only first years, and again, it's the, the session and the roles, so that, that kind of works. Profile-based enrolment um, is slightly different. It's not actually talking to the, the external database, but um, the reason for that is that we, when we create users, we, we pull a, quite a lot of stuff into their user profiles. So we've got um, you know, the, the program that they're on, whether they're undergraduate or postgraduate, um, what, what department the, the program is run by, all sorts of things like that. So, so um, rather than, you know, if we want to get for example, everybody, um, location is another thing. So if we want to get all the students from um, Oman or somewhere like that, we can actually, um, we, we can set this up. We just say profile field is location, value is Oman. And that, again, that pulls everyone into a course. Um, criteria is um, a very, very sort of Strathclyde specific thing, but essentially the, there's, a, there's an in-house student record system um, that's built on top of a massive uh, Oracle database. And uh, there's this kind of user-friendly um, interface for um, creating queries against that to, to get a list of people out. It's used for creating um, things like mailing lists and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we decided that, well, if, if there's this thing that's already there for creating mailing lists and, and whatever, creating lists of people, why can't we just pull those people into Moodle courses? So we've, we've got this thing. Essentially, you, um, you set up a criteria in this system. Um, it'll pull people in uh, to Moodle. You, you just select one. And, and again, it's, um, you, you select the role, and you can, you can set up a group name. Um, all, all of these plugins create a group for the specific people. So you, if you've got CS101 and CS102 students in the same course, uh, you get a group so you can, you can kind of um, make materials available to um, people depending on what, what class they're actually enrolled in. So, so the, new way, the new way that we, we have, um, I say new, it's, it's about three years old now, but the new way is essentially that the um, rather than the, the corporate database kind of defining the structure of your Moodle site, um, the corporate database is just a, um, a resource that Moodle can draw on to pull in, um, you know, different um, different lists of people. Um, so, it, so it, it makes it much more of a kind of flexible uh, approach to pulling pulling people in. So. Um, so as I say, like in the, the left-hand side there, you can see um, we can easily do the cross-listing things. We just didn't, we just stick to enrollment plugins and um, saying pull in CS101 and CS102. And we don't have to mess around with anything like uh, meta courses and all that kind of nonsense. We um, essentially can can fix all the problems that um, that I mentioned before. Um, so, so it's, very, it's very much the, the database is the, the resource and Moodle is using that rather than the, the database being the, you know, the, the truth and the structure about you know, how, how that works. Um, so we learned a lot. I don't know why I've got these three specific things that <laughs> are pulled in because we, we, we learned probably um, a lot more than this. But, um, Essentially, we, we learned that the, the enrollment plugin architecture in Moodle is incredibly flexible. Um, if you have some kind of idea about um, how you want to enroll students on courses, you can probably do it using the enrollment plugin architecture. It allows you to um, create forms to, um, you know, I think there's about 16 fields or something like that you can have, um, you know, in the, the data for an enrollment plugin. So you can actually define really, really um, clearly what you know, who, who you want to be pulled in and um, whatever you have to do on the back end to pull those people in is, you know, is doable. It's, um, it's, a, it's a fantastic system. And uh, so, so that, that, was, that was probably the, the main thing. Um, I don't know why I've got academics here being constrained by technology, because that was something we actually knew before was um, the, uh, if you tell someone that, yeah, you're teaching these two class codes together, but 
um, you know, we, we've created two middle courses for you. They're not going to be very happy, and it's, it's completely reasonable. So, um, so, so we we kind of strive really hard to um, to make sure that academics aren't annoyed by the, the kind of technical constraints that we have, um, and. We, we've been very much uh, changing Moodle to support the existing business practices um, rather than, than doing any kind of um, sort of enforcement of, um, of, of enrollment and like, this is how your, your, your course in Moodle must be because that's how our, our database plugin works. We can now, now say um, that, uh, you know, um, whatever you want to do, we can probably accommodate it now with Moodle. So, um, so that, that's essentially um, what, what we've done. So I hope, I hope that's of some interest, and that's me. Thanks very much.